Okay, hello, it's uh, Dave here once again with uh, Independence Live, and we're going to be returning to um, a, a previous topic. We showed blueberry soup back in November, and I'm joined today with, uh, by Eileen Jarrett from Wilma's Wishes Productions. Eileen, how are you? I'm great. It's a spectacular day. Excellent. And you're in Seattle at the moment in the United That's States. Fun. And what's your weather like? Oh, you know, surprising for Seattle, it's quite sunny. So most people yeah. are outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think there's some parallels between Scotland and Seattle weather-wise. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, so we showed uh, blueberry soup, and we showed that back in November as part of the Thursday Conversations. Um, so for those people who haven't seen it or haven't seen it since November, can you just... Yeah, sure. So Blueberry Soup is about the rewriting of the Icelandic constitution. Uh, what happened in 2008, there was a huge economic collapse in Iceland. It's one of the largest that the world has ever experienced. And so this tiny country had this opportunity to see things a bit differently and to respond to this crisis in a new creative way. And so they elected 25 individuals to sit on a constitutional council and to redraft the constitution. And this was incredible. But one of the reasons that this is so different than what we've experienced in, the, in our history is that they also used crowdsourcing during this process. So they put a draft online for the entire world to comment on. So it didn't matter who you were, where you came from, what your education or background was, you had an opportunity to participate in this process. So they came up with a really interesting draft. And you can actually Google Icelandic Constitution English and see this draft for yourself. It was a lot about the what's called the Icelandic Knitting Club. Is that right? With, uh, sorry, sewing club. It's called a sewing club, and that's a traditional meeting for for uh, it's mainly Icelandic women, and they, they meet together and they talk and they discuss. And it's uh, can you just uh, let let us know a little bit more about the sewing clubs? Yeah, sure. So it was by accident that I learned about sewing clubs, and they were these these groups that have been in Icelandic history forever and they began as a way for the women in the community to teach each other how to deal with the very harsh environmental challenges and what it's kind of morphed into is far away from sewing many women don't even sew in these clubs anymore and more about nurturing a community and coming together and discussing the issues at hand in society within the family within oneself and trying to to help each other through that. And so while making blueberry soup, I saw a number of parallels between what the nation as a whole was trying to do and these examples of sewing clubs. And um, when I would bring this back to the States and to Canada, I would just see people kind of melt and go, oh, I wish I had that here. So what we're kind of trying to do now with the blueberry soup outreach is create a global sewing club, you could say. We've kind of always had a minority complex being this uh, isolated island with a nation of 300,000 people, we always want to show the world, you know, we can do this, we, we can be a big player in the uh, international market. There's economic instability and there's political instability and there's emotional instability. <laughs> A handful of people brought uh, thousands of people to their knees. And that's the pain. And that's the hard part to be. The government can't save us all. That's it. That's 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 a hard truth. And we're going to have to do something. After nearly two years of discussion, the parliament and the government finally agreed to give the people a chance to write this own constitution. Why should we not go and uh, try to change the structure of the society that we saw break down? Even if you're not a part of the Constitutional Assembly, you can affect what will be in the Constitution. On an open website that people can you know, come up with suggestions and for meetings are, are on, the, on the web as well. I definitely think that uh, we are a little bit courageous. It's like the canary that goes into the mine. It will come out alive. You know, it's uh, sort of possible. We have already lost everything and we just have to rebuild it. Okay, brilliant. So, I mean, I remember watching that. That was fantastic. I really loved that documentary. And one of the things I, I really wished we could have done was to get that out to a much 
you know, bigger audience because the idea of of a, the, these sewing clubs, I mean, it's applicable to any society, you know, and and what that what that does, you know, sort of nurturing a little aspects of culture. I think what you, you were mentioning it's, it's about, actually it was about the coping mechanisms, how people deal with life, and I think that's something, especially in Scotland that we lost a particularly 19th century, you know, with the urbanization where people were taken from, their natural homes were put into boxes, these tenement houses and made to work in factories. People didn't have kitchens. Lots of aspects of, of culture were, were stripped away from people and were often today in, in you know, today's society uh, trying to remember these things. And a lot of the problems in society are just to do with people not really knowing how to cope um, with with normal aspects of life, you know things like having children. For many people, that can be you know too much, and I think that that's got to do with not having the support of a family and a community. People quite isolated in their lives, and that's something and I think the sewing club uh, addresses. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the really interesting components of this is in Iceland, there's a sense of loneliness over this process right now that there wasn't a lot of attention through the media internally. So it felt like it just wasn't really um, that important to a certain degree. So now one of the things we're trying to do with Blueberry Soup and then working with So Say and all these wonderful groups in Scotland is bring this around the world because just like you're saying, there's an applicability to it in a very intrinsic way. So in Iceland now they're getting to see this global community kind of say, look what you've done. You know, you're not alone. We feel this too. This is something that, you know, we can kind of come together on. So we're really, it's interesting, I went to document a process to bring it back home, but we're seeing it kind of come full circle, even back to Iceland to affect the process itself. Now, the next uh, stage of this is that you want to take the, the film on tour. Um, am I right in saying it's a European tour that you've got uh, planned? Can you, can you tell us about that? What, what are your plans? Yeah, absolutely. So last year, Blueberry Soup went on a university screening tour across North America. And because of the success and the excitement and projects that came out of that, uh, we started getting requests to bring this abroad. So we're going to be going to a heap of countries in Europe starting in the fall. So we're going to be going from September to November, just going all throughout these different countries and screening the film and then having discussions with the community about what we can extract from the Icelandic example. And if we could use that as a template for participatory democracy in a lot of the different regions and the different issues that they're trying to get through and come to consensus on. So uh, when we have the event, we'll also be screening, or not sc sorry, screening, we'll be recording the event and then putting that up online so people can see it and comment on it from wherever they are and see the difference in opinions and comments uh, for different regions all over the world. And um, I'm really excited about that component. That's something we didn't get to do on our last tour. And then we'll archive it so that uh, groups can later look on that and see, you know, in almost a historical reference, what happened during that time and the difference between countries and their opinions. Is it translated for, for French, for Spanish, Italian? Right now we have it translated in Spanish and French. Um, I don't know if we'll get it translated into Italian yet. We know that right now we're going to be visiting Greece and Austria, Spain, Scotland, um, Wales, England, uh, Norway, Ireland, uh, and I know that I'm forgetting a couple others, but now that the Kickstarter, I'm so happy to report, has been successful, we are at 100% as of this morning, uh, we'll be able to actually expand that list for a lot of nations that weren't able to participate beforehand. Excellent. What about some Spain are you coming to? Going to We're going to be going to Barcelona and to Madrid and um, and Valencia. Valencia, okay, excellent. Hey, that's fantastic. Okay, I'll, I'll see you in uh, Madrid when you when you come. I'm uh, looking forward stay, to it. Stay in touch about that. We'll have another Independence Live uh, report on that one, uh, and I'll, I'll take part in the discussion. So that's fantastic. I would assume mm -hmm. you'll have some very positive responses where people really get inspired and want to. A work with the ideas and discuss with their, their friends in the yes. community. But then you must have other people who think, you know, that's that's just not practical. That I mean, come on. I, I mean, I personally, I've had some people criticise blueberry soup myself. Um, they say that you know that that's fine for them. 
as if it's somehow you know exclusive to a some people in in Iceland who have a certain level of personal confidence. As far as I could tell, the criticism was people don't have that kind of personal confidence. Therefore, um, you know, give up. Yeah, sure. No, that you're bringing up a very important point too. During the entire process in Iceland, there was a parade of naysayers. There even still is. There's a lot of critique, even internally, that this process can never happen. We're too divided. We're too separate. You know, our opinions and our interests are just way too separate to be able to come to consensus to make such a odd um, process come to light. So even in Iceland, they thought this wasn't possible. So when I was uh, touring this around the States, that was one of the first things people would say is your point. They would say, how could this ever happen here? We're too divided, you know, we'll never come to consensus. But that's every process. And just like any experiment, sometimes it takes a few tries to really tweak and get right. So I think we're witnessing that. This is a practice in participatory democracy. These are new ways of looking at how citizens can engage. So I think that's something that we can all pull from a bit. Uh, generally, when we start talking about this, the first thing is, oh my God, it didn't happen. The parliament just tabled it. How could they do that? So people get really built up and they get this sense of citizenry that I don't know that a lot of us have had a chance to call upon. You and Scotland, sure, in the last year have had to really ask a lot of these same questions that Iceland had to ask about what's my role as a citizen? How can I participate? What kind of future do I want to see for my country? So I, I'm really excited to see this come to Scotland and to hear the types of conversations that come out of this. Yeah, um, I, w I would imagine that the, the response will be a little bit different across uh, across Europe. Um, have, have you got any ideas in mind as to what, what you're expecting coming up? Well, you know, one of the first things that comes to mind is Greece. So in the middle of the turmoil and the restructuring that Greece is considering, how can this example be brought in there? So they screened the film about a year ago in Greece, and they had some very in interesting discussions. Um, but now that all has happened, I'm, I'm really curious to see. So we're going to be going right before one of the major votes. So I'm sure that there's going to be an opportunity to hear a lot of people's opinions on what they imagine can go what can happen in the wake of what happened in Iceland? Yeah, I think one of the aspects about Europe is that they, <clears throat> for, for a long time we were, I don't know if we were under an, an illusion, but we certainly had this idea that the European uh, project was, it was about all that you know, rhetoric of coming together, working together, and, the, and, and in, a, in one sense it has achieved its goal in the it's very unlikely there's going to be any military affairs between any of the countries in Europe. Um, that's probably never going to happen. That's one of the, the key goals achieved. But the reality that we're seeing now is that it just seems to be this massive neoliberal privatization agenda, which uh, we've allowed to you know, impose itself upon us. And I think it's only in the last maybe few years that we're all starting to you know, go, oh, wait a minute, what, what is the EU? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's a very important question to be asking, and that's something very different than what we need to consider in the United States. Um, I think that you guys have a, a tremendous opportunity to to reconsider what happens from here on out. And definitely, and the at the moment, there's um, we've just realized that the European Union and the United States have created a, a trade deal between each other called TTIP. And there's another one within the states called TTP. They're all they're, they're quite similar, and it's it's all done been done behind people's backs, and mm -hmm. to go from this this stage of realizing that everything's being done secretly through big massive corporations in the World Bank, completely outside of the control of not just you but your own government, uh, to then bringing politics right back down to to the home is is probably an extraordinarily important step for people to start to recognize that you do have a responsibility within this. You can't say it's all out of my hands just because it's been taken out of your hands. You actually yeah. need to, you know, because power essentially sort of comes you know, from, from within. Well, you're precisely it on with that comment. Come One of the things that I was very affected by in the film was there was an individual that said, if you can look at the government and you can look at democracy and participa participation as a creation, 
So everything that we have around us, like the chair that we're sitting in, the house that we are, you know, dwelling in, the, the government, the banks, anything is something that was once an idea, which means that everything can be looked at anew. We can revise it through a creative uh, sphere. And I, I was very empowered by that notion that we weren't landlocked into these these systems and these structures and these ideas that were no longer serving the people. And so we have a great responsibility at the same time. I had screened the film at one university and it was um, right after we screened it, there was just, there was no comments at all. There was no questions. There was just silence. And I, and it was the first time that happened. And I brought that up to my father and he said, that is the death of democracy. Silence is the death of democracy. And that, that helped propel conversations ever since then, noticing that and calling that out. So when that happens, saying, do you all hear that? This is something we need to pay attention to. Yeah, there was something actually quite, it's a, it was a, when, I, when I live in, in Glasgow, in Scotland, a, the, the local hospital was had its name changed for no reason a, to, to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital or something like that. Yeah. Lots, lots of us, of course, were like, come on, what, what are you doing? Um, and the criticism that was coming was it's only a name. It doesn't matter. You know, a, you're wasting your time. It's a distraction. But the fact is that the, they've spent over a million pounds out of the health budget in order to change the name, in order to celebrate oh. a monarch. It makes mm -hmm. absolute sense. But the, the natural reaction from so many people was that you're wasting your time you're wasting your energy, and it's not worth talking about. But there, there is actually something extraordinarily worth talking about. And through the pressure, we've now got the, the the freedom of information request. We've got the figures. We know how much money, and it comes directly out of that local healthcare budget. You know, it comes away from the money that pays for our, our treatment if we need it. You know, especially which is especially important in a time when austerity is taking um, all of the money out of public services. So. I absolutely see what you're saying. There's a, a kind of a survivalist mentality that happens after a crisis, as you guys know. And it it's looked at almost in this panic way of we can only look at the top tier things. But in reality, the whole scope needs to be looked at. Otherwise, that window for change kind of closes up. There's a metaphor about, I can't remember who, who said it, but it's like the boiling frog. <laughs> if, yeah, do you know the one? If, if, if you were to throw a, a frog into boiling water, it would jump out straight away. But if you slowly heat the water, the frog never moves until it boils itself to death. Excellent point. This is a great reference, yes. Okay. Oh, so sorry, I've just had a correction on the money. It was over a hundred thousand pounds, not over a million pounds to for okay. the to the hospital. So uh, thanks for the thanks for the correction there. So you have achieved your crowdfunder, you met your target. Yeah, sure. So we've had a crown funder for about 22 days, and we've just seen this eruption of people coming to support it uh, from all over the world. And what we, the reason that we have the crowd funder is because there are a lot of regions that can't afford to have a screening. And I just, I didn't want to, that to be the reason we didn't go to areas that wanted to have these discussions with their community. So we had this crowdfunder and um, it's been successful as of this morning. With that money, we'll also be able to afford to have a crew come in and film the discussions and then put them online because that was one of the stumbling blocks for me is that I would be speaking, but I wasn't able to film it at the same time. Hi, my name is Eileen Jarrett and I'm the director of Blueberry Soup. In 2008, even the most remote countries fell victim to the global economic crisis. It was Iceland that suffered the largest collapse in the world. It was so bad there that people started questioning the fundamental premises upon which they governed themselves. They got angry and got out on the streets and, and demanding for changes. Then this grassroots initiative began. Blueberry Soup, it's, a, it's the story of the constitutional process prompted by the financial crisis in, of all places, Iceland. If we're gonna start somewhere, why not the Constitution? You've got this very open process that eventually resulted in a draft. Iceland is a case in which we can look and see how this might actually work in a positive manner. 
It's like the canary that goes into the mine. If we'll come out alive, you know, it's uh, sort of possible. The main purpose of the Blueberry Soup Tour is to talk about what does it mean to be a citizen? What does it mean to have a democracy? The, the film is making ripples all around the world and it's creating a discourse. It's, it's adding to a global discourse about justice and, and new ways of thinking about how to govern ourselves. What sort of country do we want to live in? That's the question. In the fall of 2015, Blueberry Soup will be going on a European screening tour. Here we'll be showing the film and then having discussions about what it means to reimagine civic engagement using what happened in Iceland as our template. And here's where we need your help. I'd like to document those conversations and then put them back online for the global community to be able to share and view. We also would like to bring this to a number of regions that are not in a financial position where they can afford to host an event like this on their own. To thank you for your help in this project, we have some really amazing incentives that have been put together by some of my very favorite Icelanders. So please help me in sharing this. I so appreciate your support and I cannot wait to share with you all the amazing things that come out of this. And even if times are good, people are still like, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time for these ambiguities. I need a strong leader. I can't be bothered with all these decisions and, and all these opinions I'm supposed to have and, and all these discussions we need. And I, I just think those people aren't ready for a democracy. Democracy means not having strong leaders, but having strong people. model is really working for you then because I mean we, we've been using it ourselves and we really find it a real nail biter. It's very hit and miss, you don't ever know uh, what's coming in but it seems to have been very successful in your case and also in the, <laughs> the Icelandic case. Yeah, with the, the crowdfunder I found this to be a very, um, an emotional process and um, you know, in the end, in this last week, seeing all these people write letters and tweet about what this means to them, oh, it's just been rewarding on a level that I could have never imagined. I've always been really interested in this process and I documented what happened almost in a selfish way because I was very inspired. And um, I found a place for my voice and for being a citizen in this film. And so to see other people take from that and own something in there and help it to grow has been a, a really incredible process to, to be witness of. Okay. Um, and is it still possible to watch Blueberry Soup online? I think it was five euros, was it five pounds, euros, dollars? I can't remember. Blueberrysoupfilm.com and you can see the film. So we tried a new platform where we've been going through Vimeo and having a great time because it's got its own community there that are people looking for um, films like, like Blueberry Soup. Okay. No, but I definitely recommend if, if anybody hasn't seen Blueberry Soup, I mean, just pay. Is, is it five American dollars? Is that correct? That's correct. So that's in, if you're paying in pounds sterling, you're talking about less than three pounds. Mm -hmm. But that, that's going towards this extremely important project. So, you know. It's, it's that same principle, buy them a pint, you know, just buy them a pint. If you think they're, what they're doing <laughs> and good. I would love anybody that sees it, I mean, to, to participate yeah. in this discussion because it's still very much alive and yeah. people are constantly yeah. checking back it's, in to see how, how their community is taking in the, the template that Iceland has kind of put forward. And it's the kind of thing where if you get like, you know, your friends or some neighbours over and you all watch it together and then you have that kind of, that's brilliant, why do we do that? You know, that's, there's, something's always going to follow from it. So it's well worth doing. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Eileen, is there anything else that you would like to contribute to this discussion? I have had such an amazing time working with um, So Say and Kilter and Independence Live. And what we're building together is exactly why I made this film. So uh, I just encourage everyone to stay tuned for the dates that are going to be coming, um, particularly in Scotland, because I think we're going to see some really incredible discussions come out of that. Yeah, sure. So one of the things that I'm asked generally in every single screening is why did I call it blueberry soup? And um, blueberry soup is an Icelandic comfort food that's been in the, the community forever. And I like this idea of something unique something comforting, something that's letting you know you're being nourished and you're a part of this. So we're kind of all in the soup 
together. And that's why I chose that. So one of the incentives, if you do participate in the Kickstarter, is you can get a packet of blueberry soup. So just as oh. David was saying, you could invite your friends over. You could make some blueberry soup and some popcorn and watch the film and then discuss with each other. Okay, you anticipated my last question, but there we go. Hey, that's fantastic. So Eileen Jarrett from Wilma's Wishes Productions, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we'll definitely, our Scottish division will see you in Scotland when you come over. And we'll stay in touch because I'm going to come and uh, be part of the screening in Madrid. Oh, I look forward to it. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for the people at home who tuned in. Uh, we'll catch you soon. Okay, peace. Take care.